Four. Real fast. Yeah. Real fast. We've got a little Pharmacia update, Gons. So we've spoken about uh, psychedelics becoming medicine in Australia, the movement, the global movement uh, for psychedelic enlightenment, even not just at Burning Man or whatever, but also Davos. Psychedelic shamans becoming a, a part of the way, the realigning of the beast system's fascination with the spiritual realm has led people to uh, into deeper and deeper realms of psychedelic consciousness and and now it is becoming the law of the land. Policy, 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 people. Indeed, last episode, we talked about psychedelic shamans. Nope. That's the wrong word. Psychedelic chaplains. Chaplains. Chaplaincy, a westernized version of shamanism becoming more and more important in the scientific establishment with psychedelics. And here's just a quick little update coming from The Economist magazine. Headline, shamanism is Britain's fastest growing religion. Now, this isn't particularly... uh, explicitly about psychedelic shamans it does not mention second uh yes it does never mind <laughs> and let's get into it <laughs> In a garden studio in North London, Steve Atman holds a monthly shamanic drumming circle. Participants stand with arms outstretched as Mr. Altman traces their shape in the air with burning copal, a Mexican incense in a purifying ritual known as smudging. Ground, snakeskin, feathers, candles, and a bowl of water, each representing the four elements of Inca cosmology, sit in the center of the room. The ceremony culminates in a soul journey in which rhythmic drumming is believed to facilitate an uh, an ascent into the spirit realm. One woman describes climbing vines to the heavens from Colindale. Shamanism is rooted in animism, the idea that every entity in nature, whether plant, animal, or rock, is alive. Trance is the core shared practice. Shamans, who are traditionally trained by other shamans, learn to enter trances, aided by drumming, singing, dancing, or occasionally psychotropic drugs, to commune with spirits. Such beliefs date back to hunter-gatherer societies. Quote, we talk about prostitution being the oldest profession, but really it's shamanism. Says Simon Buxton of the Sacred Trust, a shamanic training center, and random, not good enough reason to bring up prostitution, (laughs) Simon. The shamanism has a long history. It was barely practiced in Britain until recently. In the English and Welsh census of 2011, just 650 people said it was their religion. But its popularity is increasing in the census of 2021, the results of which were released in November. That figure had increased to 8,000. Partly because the numbers are so small, that makes shamanism Britain's fastest growing religion. Mm -hmm. Sorry, faith. Alexander Alec, who researches the subject at Birmingham University, says its appeal cuts across age, race, and class. One reason is climate change. Oh, of is course. that the explanation? Of climate change. Of course it is. Okay. One reason is climate change. Almost one in 20 Britons said they experience climate anxiety in 2022. I, I wonder why. Course, I wonder who's how, causing how, the anxiety of these people. How wouldn't you? How could you not? We were told... Every day that we're going to die of climate climate. change. Shamanism places all things in nature on equal footing. Paganism, another religion rooted in nature, is also on the rise. Quote, it gives people a spiritual outlet for political beliefs about climate change, (laughs) says Mr. Buxton. And this is what really Uh, struck me. Yeah. That right there. It gives people a spiritual outlet for political beliefs about climate change. Yeah. So there's a long, broad conversation, you know, in, in, in the U.S. about Christianity and conservative politics, which came first, what informs the other, you know, uh, but in, in sort of a different way here in the U.K., the religion is coming after, at least if you follow the numbers, you know, there's only 650 shamans or shamanistic people uh 
15, 4, 13 years ago, whatever. And now there's 8,000, which is an incredible rise percentage wise. And what else has happened in the past 10 years? Well, the, the sort of alarmism or the data or the whatever you want to call it. The attention is what it is. The attention on climate change has become more and more prevalent. In fact, a daily, honestly, sort of a daily trauma, a daily trigger. <laughs> No matter where you are, who you are, what uh, what you watch or listen to, somebody's talking about climate change. Uh, and to have, and it kind of goes back to a conversation we've been sort of having in bits and pieces through this whole episode, which is policy. You know, policy, 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 and uh, the sort of social uh, engineering of of beliefs, people's cares, people's worries, people's everything. For me, it's robots, but for a lot of people, it's, it's climate change. And if it's, if this data is to be believed, it looks like if you strike enough fear into people about climate change, they become pagans. <laughs> That's just, <laughs> just sort of what the data shows. I mean, much like how, I don't know, you can, uh, whatever, put enough fear into people about hell, maybe, or, or something. Balloons. Eternal life. Balloons. <laughs> you I mean, can, joke, you know, push, but it's, it's the truth there. <laughs> totally. You can push people to, you know, align with uh, Christianity in the same way that it's this political belief about climate change that leads to a spiritual outlet of shamanism. Just very interesting cause and effect issue there. A small but growing number of therapists integrate shamanism into their work, which I thought was kind of weird. I was speaking with somebody a couple of days ago and they said, my therapist thinks that I've lived multiple lives. Oh boy. And I thought, that's a pretty weird therapist. That's, <laughs> that's a weird. That's a therapist that, on drugs. Well, you know, whatever. Lots of people can believe that. Sure. But to have it come up in a therapeutic session where it's supposed to be very science, you know, supposed to be very. It, they're a, like effectively a doctor of sorts. Sure. You know, you go to your doctor like if you went to your physician and they're like, ah, yes, I see you've. Uh, you have this ailment. It must have been because you were bad in your previous life. It's, you know, it's a great karma. template. You. you can pretty much do anything with it. You know, you can yeah. go anywhere. Anyways, a small but growing number of therapists integrate shamanism into their work. They might guide a lonely client to embody the energy of a tree and reconnect with nature. Oh, are you lonely? Oh, I've seen this before. Pretend you're a tree. <laughs> Still lonely? Didn't think so. Says Paul Francis, a psychotherapist who teaches shamanic counseling at the Three Ravens College. Three Ravens College of Therapeutic Shamanism in Wales. It would be Wales. They might also help patients with soul loss. That's in quotes. Soul loss. Mm. What others would call post-traumatic stress disorder. I love that. What others would call PTSD. (laughs) Okay. By searching for a lost part of them in the spirit realm. Even the corporate world is interested. Sarah Nagus, a shamanic business coach, not a real job, has ministered to everyone from Microsoft executives to TEDx speakers. I thought that word ministered was very interesting Mm. while we're deconstructing this, uh, sort of giving a Western um, spin on shamanic business coaching Mm. but popularity can attract opportunists the title shaman is unregulated so anyone can claim it quote it's become a buzzword in marketing says mr alec huh maybe we should try that out guns canary cry shamans think we can get a use the word shaman a little bit more i'm a i'm a robo shaman (laughs) quote that's what's next a techno shaman yeah Uh, Quote, a lot of people don't understand what it means. They just slap it on anything. Uh End of the article. Short article. 
seemed jam packed with some interesting keywords though. But I think the the long and short of it is not only does the data show that shamanism is growing in popularity, it does sort of parallel the growth in Wiccan theology and witchcraft in the US and and in the UK actually. Um, but it is the age of reenchantment, the Carl Teichrib. Uh, that this this is the reason why Burning Man um, research has been a, a part of what we do now, have done for 10, 11 years almost, is because uh, Carl Teichrib, who is a uh, incredible author and researcher, we've certainly talked to him many times. If anybody's followed us, also Ravel, we had him on, uh, talked about the age of reenchantment, where the the secular world is thirsty is so thirsty for meaning uh and spirituality they just don't like christianity uh and so to see such a rise i mean shamanism seems might not seem so extreme today but that's a fairly new uh thing i mean shamanism is pretty obscure it's a pretty obscure sort of spiritual tradition for white brits to uh, get interested in, uh, you know, maybe maybe more sort of European paganism might be more uh, popular, but mm-hmm. straight up shamanism is a pretty interesting one. Um, but it goes along the lines of the growth in psychedelic medicine, uh, not only becoming extremely popular, but now legal around the world. Any thoughts on that? Well, no, not really. I mean, yeah, okay. it's not a surprise. U- UK, uh, isn't the UK also where they have a lot of alien beliefs? Over more people believe in aliens than God. Wasn't that a thing they yeah, figured out yeah, a few years a ago? Couple years ago, yeah. So yeah. It, it's it, once you create the vacuum, you, you remove God from the picture, create a vacuum. You can <clears throat> you can well, install a new worldview, and it seems like shamanism or some kind of you know nature based paganism is fulfilling that gap so to speak and it's beneficial you to know, the controllers because it you know aligns with certain political ideologies and things of that nature yeah well you know it's interesting <clears throat> the you know the conversation in christianity about is christianity and the existence of aliens are they mutually exclusive mm-hmm. um and for the most part most people agree yes uh, that there are no aliens they're demons and any sort of alien revelation or alien uh, uh, disclosure is deceit Mm -hmm. because they're not extraterrestrial yeah at best they're interdimensional which still qualifies as demonic in some ways uh but i don't think shamanism has any problem with aliens i think it would totally slip right in in fact i mean they they might be contacting aliens in their whole thing yeah right i think they would consider Uh, Now, I think it's important that we recognize the difference between new age and shamanism. Mm -hmm. New age is not necessary. New age is new age. Okay. New age. They're all about aliens. They're all about all that stuff. And it it might not be the most important thing in your entire life to know the difference, but I think it helps not just with when understanding, but also talking with people uh, in your life. If you have anybody into these things, if you sort of equate new age with shamanism, with witchcraft, with whatever. <clears throat> it's just not going to work very well. It kind of comes across as ignorant. Um, but shamanism being sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, sort of uh, older, obviously it's much, much older than New Age, hence the name New. Um, I don't know how deep I actually want to get into that right now, but it, it's an interesting <laughs> thing to think. I, we need to keep moving, yeah. but... But uh, maybe maybe we should do we've we've been discussing guns. We've been discussing putting together sort of standalone topical, almost like classes on stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and making them available. We've been talking about that for years. Never done it. This is part of why we want to see how many people can sign up for uh, monthly support, because part of what we want to do is create like uh green what is it called evergreen informational things Mm -hmm. 
Um, but that's hard to do when we spend 30 hours a week making this podcast. Uh, so anyways, if you want to know more about that, send us an email. 